Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron's. It's been a nice end to the weekend with plenty of sunshine to get out and enjoy on this Sunday. And the good news is we're expecting more sunshine as we head into this week, at least for a while before rain and snow chances do return by next weekend. Here's some of the photos we got from you guys today. This first picture here was from Steve. Lovely sunrise out there next to the water. Very peaceful morning, chilly morning as temperatures started the day down in the 20s. As the sun came up, temperatures came up as well. Linda sent this picture in from Lake Makatawa. Beautiful picture out there with the sun today. Another great view from over in Muskegon. Bill got this picture there looking out over the lake. Little ice arch forming there down near the water. That ice not going to last too long with the temperatures we have in our forecast. And the end of the day from Andy at Duck Lake State Park. Beautiful sunset picture there. Of course, if you want to send us your photos, you can always find me on social media. Meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on the X Twitter, Instagram and threads. Your temperatures today, they went well above what we were expecting. Handed up in the 50s this afternoon in Grand Rapids. 52 Muskegon actually tied a record from 2019. 51 in Holland. That temperature not within our three degree guarantee. Hope to get back on track by tomorrow. When it comes to tomorrow, we are expecting temperatures to go back down into the 40s. That's why 13 weather ball is lit up in blue as cooler temperatures are in view. The 13 on your side weather ball sponsored by La Fontaine Ford Grand Rapids. And those cooler temperatures will certainly be around tonight as well as we're dropping back into the 20s overnight down to 30 already as of 10 o'clock in Grand Rapids. 32 Fremont, 31 Battle Creek and Holland as well. Expect mostly clear to at times partly cloudy skies overnight with a little bit of a wind chill out there. Winds not too bad coming in from the northeast around 3 to 8 miles per hour, though most of us are seeing calm winds at this hour. Expect only a slight wind chill as we head through the overnight hours. Temperatures will fall again into the 20s before rising back into the 40s for tomorrow afternoon. We'll be looking at mostly sunny skies throughout the day on Monday with temperatures that go from 26 to start the day up to 41 by the afternoon. Those temperatures keep warming up as we head into Tuesday, but a few more clouds will work their way through. Partly cloudy skies with a high of a 44. The satellite radar across the region this evening, very quiet. Some clouds up to the north again. We'll see a little bit of cloud cover drift across the region tonight, but the bulk of the clouds will stay off to the west and the south. Hour by hour forecast here shows an increase in clouds between now and tomorrow morning. I think it's a little too aggressive on the cloud cover, but don't be surprised if we see some partly cloudy skies out there early before we break toward mostly sunny by the afternoon. Again, I think we're going to see a little more clearing than the models have been showing us here. We'll be back toward partly cloudy as we head into Tuesday morning with some cloud cover around throughout the day, but sunshine popping up as well by the afternoon. We're not expecting anything in terms of rain rainfall potential, at least for several days here. That's where we see our next system come through on Thursday. Showers become possible by the late afternoon and into the evening. Shower chances continue overnight into early Friday. We'll see a little bit of a break by Friday afternoon and evening before a few small stray chances for rain and snow impact our Saturday and our Sunday. The next bigger system, though, that holds off until Monday when we could actually see some accumulating snow potential here in West Michigan Though we got to keep a close eye on it because if this low pressure ducks a little further to the south, we'll miss the system entirely. And if it comes a little further north, this will mix with some rain. But that's our only real chance for wintry weather in the forecast ahead as the overall pattern remains locked in to warmer than average temperatures as we head all the way through February 18th. Taking a look at temperatures for tomorrow. Speaking of warmer than average, hanging around in the low to mid 40s on the lake shore. Those temperatures a little cooler up to the north, hanging right around 40 degrees for Monday afternoon. We'll look for temperatures in the low 40s from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. Temperatures will rise as we head throughout the week, starting from 41 Monday up to the 50s again. By Thursday, we'll even be in the mid 50s there for the highest temperature. This forecast 52 as the rain comes through Friday, falling back into the 40s through Saturday and Sunday of next weekend. We'll drop down into the mid 30s, still slightly above average with that snow and rain chance on Monday before we dry things back out by the end of our forecast.
heading across the country tonight. California is being hit with a major storm. Widespread flooding is possible from Santa Barbara to Los Angeles with heavy snow and damaging winds in the mountains. 40 million Americans under a flood watch in California from Redding all the way to San Diego. Officials warning of potential life threatening conditions. Here's ABC News's Jacqueline Lee with the details. 40 million people under alerts as an atmospheric river pushes dangerous weather, including strong winds, high waves and widespread flooding across much of California. This storm is predicted to be one of the largest and most significant in our county's history. In Santa Barbara, evacuation orders issued throughout the county. In the last seven days, they have seen 300% of their normal rainfall by this time of year already. So as he was saying, the ground's not gonna be able to absorb the rain that's coming. This apartment complex in Ventura County building a wall of sandbags after major flooding last year left parts of the area submerged. It can get really bad. Like this entire street was like a river last year. The Ventura Beach RV Park, which sits in a low lying area prone to flood is now under evacuation orders. Six to 12 inches of rain could fall in some areas, double what they usually see in the entire month of February. Officials urging people to be cautious, especially around flooded roadways. Six inches of water can down an adult in that water. 12 inches of water can sweep away your vehicle. Further north, strong winds over 80 miles per hour and a high surf advisory near the Big Sur coastline. You can see the wind blowing the trees in San Jose. In Sonoma County, multiple trees down, this one falling on an occupied vehicle. Officials say it took about an hour to free the driver. I had to cut the trees, uh, like the limbs and everything around it to gain access to the driver who was trapped. And that driver taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Los Angeles. One Good Thing is sponsored by La Fontaine Lincoln Grand Rapids. And back closer to home, an educational group in Grand Rapids wants to make sure students in every community have someone to look up to. 13 on your side's Matt Gard shows us why in today's One Good Thing. Yeah! Dr. Kelly Christopher is back at her old stomping grounds, the classrooms of Dickinson Academy. When I was at Dickinson, I wasn't a particularly good math student. Back then, Dr. Christopher says she wouldn't have even known what an engineer was, let alone that she could or would grow up to be one. I didn't have any mentors in math that looked like me. I didn't know any women who liked math. Um, I didn't have any people of color really in my school that were that love math. In 2014, Dr. Christopher started STEM Greenhouse to make sure kids at Dickinson and beyond have professionals of color to look up to in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. Okay. I will go into it after we do it. So really quick, keep up here. Mentors like Jay Alford, aka Mr. J help students stay excited about learning even after their backpacks are zipped up at the end of the school day. Uh, it just gives me the energy when kids are involved and kids start debating and kids start comparing scientific facts and theories. When the passion comes for science, then I know I did my job. When I get kids fired up, I want kids just as fired up about science and what we're doing in our classroom as they are for TikTok. Three, Three two, one. One. STEM Greenhouse now serves about a thousand students each year, including China Jackson, who has become one of the program's shining stars. I like that the teachers look like me and that they can, they give me extra help with things that I struggle in. And it's plain fun, even though you're still learning. Dr. Christopher says STEM Greenhouse is for students of all ability levels. There's no shame in using a calculator or even counting on your fingers. That's why we're here. We want kids who don't think that they are math people, that don't believe that they can ever achieve in those th fields. We want them to believe that, you know, there is something out there for them too. STEM Greenhouse has been tracking their success over the years, finding their students are 50% more likely to take advanced math or science classes in high school and also 22% more interested in going into college.
In news related to the environment, new research released this week comes with a word of caution for electric vehicle owners. They may have safety concerns that their gas equivalents don't. 13 on your side's Nate Belt reports on a study from the University of Nebraska that shows that guardrails, at least how they're currently designed, are unable to withstand the heavier electric vehicles, largely thanks to the batteries inside. This is video from that University of Nebraska study. You can see the electric truck slam easily through the guardrails and into the barriers behind them. James Morin, the EV consultant at the Michigan International Auto Show, says batteries inside those EVs add on a significant amount of weight. I have a relatively small hatchback that I drive, and it's probably five to 700 pounds heavier than a gas equivalent would be. That extra weight, too much for guardrails across the country as they are today, according to the study. But Morin says it isn't the first time guardrails haven't held up. In the 90s, when SUVs began to take off, a change was made. At that point, the guardrails weren't meant to handle cars that were that tall, so they had to be adjusted up. And Morin expects with the rise in EV popularity, improvements will likely come again. Good change can, can facilitate lots of other changes along the way. Continuing with highway news, you may have seen funny or memorable electronic signs on the highway. Things like hands on the wheel, not on your meal. But those catchphrases might soon be in the rearview mirror, at least according to some social media post. Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team explains what's really happening. Electronic highway sign humor is coming to an end. You can't be funny on those signs anymore. Have you seen the many headlines and social posts that say it's the end of the road for funny electronic highway signs? Like these viral messages meant to encourage safe driving. The posts claim the federal government is making sign writers be more pedestrian. But is the Federal Highway Administration really banning funny messages on electronic highway signs? Let's verify. Our sources are the Federal Highway Administration, the Federal Register, and the 11th edition of the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices for Streets and Highways. The Highway Administration has a road trip worthy 1100 page manual for every type of sign you see on the highway, including electronic ones. On December 19th, the Highway Administration released an update that says, messages that are intended to be humorous should not be used as they might be misunderstood. A Highway Administration spokesperson clarified to Verify that the update is just a recommendation, not a dead end, and does not include a ban on humor or pop culture references. Adding state transportation agencies should emphasize keeping drivers' attention on the road while using signs for safety campaigns. So, no, the federal government is not banning funny messages on electronic highway signs, but they are asking sign writers to pump the brakes when the update goes into effect in 2026. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Finally tonight, check this out. As West Michigan starts to warm up, ice is beginning to melt on our local water systems, leading to a dramatic rescue from a once frozen lake. The Plainfield Township and Cannon Township Fire Departments responded to two deer that had fallen into the water after the ice had started to fade. Crews were able to remove them from the lake and get them safely to shore where nearby residents were able to help them warm up. Glad everyone made it out of that situation. OK, and definitely a good reminder that the ice is not safe, even if you can still find it across West Michigan, especially with our warming forecast this week. If you want to stay up to date, by the way, on that forecast or any other news headlines, you can always do so online at 13 yoursidecom or by downloading our news and weather apps. For now, though, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.